Hey guys, it's Mome, and today we are as many as ing. Is that a is that a phrase? I don't know. Party invitations. I thought this would be a really cool thing to show you guys because when you make a party invitation, you never need one. You need a lot of them, right? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use our new stamp set called Invitation Builder. Love this guy, and I'm going to use this pack called All Boy. But any 12 by 12, the girl one, or any party that you're having, you know, depending on the party, any 12 by 12 paper pack will work the same. All right, as always, what's the first thing we do with an as many as project? We dissect the paper, okay? Before we dissect, I want to encourage you guys to go ahead and hit like on the video and give me a quick subscribe. Okay, so this 12 by 12 has a lot to offer, okay? Number one, we have these pages that have this beautiful, like, small imagery, which we want, okay? Then we have these cut-aparts, which I'm not going to use in this particular video today. So, what I'm going to do is pull those out. Now, I want to show you something. I can use it if I need this page on the back. I can certainly use this. Just because I don't need these doesn't mean I can't use this. I know we put that in our head and we get all about ourselves with these cut-aparts, but don't do that to yourself. It's just a piece of paper. On this side, it's this color, and on this side, it's this color. Okay, let's think of it like that. I definitely want to use this plaid or possibly the color on the back. This one is super cute. Let's pull it out. Oh my goodness, these images. Here's the same thing again. Now, I know you're struggling with this thought that this is the color on this side and this is the color on this side, but I really like this, so there's a chance I'm going to use that. I'm going to put it over here. The sharks are super cute. Uh, this is super cute. Look how cute this pack is. All right, here's another one. Let's see what's on the back side of this one and see if I can use it. Oh, it's baseballs. See, I either need the baseballs or I need the cut aparts, but I might not need both. I'm going to put that one over here because I'm not real sure about that one. And then look at these. Super cute. All right. Then we have our stickers, which we will use, but not till much later in the process. Let's go back to these pieces. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is find a page that'll show well on camera so we can talk about it. All right. So this page works really well on screen. You can see what I'm talking about. Now, I've already planned my design. We talked about that earlier. I'm ready to go, and I know I'm using a five by seven. Now, as you know, a five by seven card does not use paper extremely efficiently. Now, it's a birthday party, so I don't need a hundred invitations. I don't know, you might. I don't need that for a typical birthday party around me, so I can get plenty out of here, but I'm gonna show you a way to get the most out of your paper, okay? So for a five by seven, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at your 12 by 12 paper. If your first cut is your, is your tallest piece, for me, it'll be six and three-fourths because I want an edge, I want a mat. I'll come down to six and three-fourths and cut it here, okay? That'll get me two pieces. That'll be my background for my card or my first mat, okay? It's going to leave me plenty to get a five by seven down here. Now, there's a caveat. This is where things happen, okay? If I flip this over and show you, you'll see when I cut this section off, by the way, that looks just like the generally. How funny is that? So distracted. When I cut this section off, my orientation is fine. But when I cut this section, when I have this left over, it means that when I turn this, my cars will not be going in the same direction. Now, that may not bother you, and sometimes it doesn't bother folks. You may not care if the cars are going up on your um, invitation. But when we get to that point, I will show you how to make the most out of this if you need to, okay? So I still want us to get three card mats out of this page, but sometimes we're going to have to do a little fancy footwork. Now, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but the reason is I want you to really understand what I'm saying. All right, so let's trim this up. So I know then that I need a six and three-fourths by four and three-fourths first card mat. So I'm going to start by cutting my six and three-fourths first. Now, like I was saying, if you don't need a whole lot of invitations, if, um, I don't know, maybe 12 or so invitations is enough, you can just use this top piece, cut two from each one of your 12 by 12s, and make it up, and you'll be fine. What I'm going to do first is just go through and get all my six and three quarter inch pieces. We'll come back and talk about what we're going to do with this bottom piece to get the most out of them in just a few minutes. So, let me cut all of these. So I have 10 pieces of cardstock that I'm working with. That's what we dissected out in the beginning of the video. So that means when I cut these six and three quarter inch pieces down to four and three fourths, which is what I need for my first mat of my five by seven card, 
I can get 20 invitations. Now that may be enough. You may not need more than that. Probably won't for most parties that you're doing, especially for your kids. That's a, about the size of a classroom, you know. So just doing that section gets me, I've already done some of them, so I'll show you, gets me 20 invitation mats, okay? Now it leaves me with these guys, which you'll see will come in handy later, okay? They may or may not come in handy, we'll see. We might use those. All right, now the strips we have left over. Remember these guys? I told you weren't gonna be exactly right for you to get a five by seven. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through and look, this guy right here, I can get five by seven from, and let me show you why because plaid can go in any direction. Now this side wouldn't be able to do that. So really quick, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna cut this down to four and three fourths, just like this. And then I'm gonna come back and cut it down to six and three fourths. So again, with this being an as many as situation, I'm trying to get as many as I can. This can go right to our background pile. Now I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna look through here and see. I love this little side, this is cute, so we'll use this one for the card, but that's what I'm gonna look at. If I don't like this side, I can always use the B side, right? But I like that side of this one. Let's see what's on the other side of this one. Also, something else I wanna show you. This is a good example. So this is clearly this orientation, right? So if I were to put this in and cut four and three-fourths by six and three-fourths, it would be wrong. But look at this side. Is it clearly that orientation? That bike is upside down. This bike is going in this direction. That bike is upside down. So I probably can get one out of here. Let's cut it. Let me do it. If it doesn't work, <laughs> it'll be my mistake and not yours. But this is going to work just fine. I can tell by looking at it here, right? So I can get another background for my 5 by 7 invitation. So now we're up to 12 if I'm doing my math right. I think I am. I could be off. You guys probably know better than I do. Now these, again, go into my pile because we're still going to use those. All right, so let's go back through and see what else we can get. Okay, so without any fancy footwork, that gets me 14 uh, invitation mats. Isn't that awesome? All right, now it's time for fancy footwork. Let me show you what we're going to do. So we have, let's just start here. These are those pieces we have left over, right? I'm going to put these aside for now. We'll come back to those later. And then I've got these pieces, right? Let's look at what this looks like on the back side. Okay, it's plaid. This is easy because we love plaid, right? We already know this is cut to four and three fourths. We just need to add a little bit more down here to make it six and three fourths. So this guy, let me see how tall it is. He is five and a quarter. So that means I need to add an inch and a half if I did my math right. Now, how do I know if I did my math right? Let me show you something that I like to do. <laughs> I will put this at one, right? Keep this right here at the cut line, okay? And then I'm just gonna go just like this. This is six and three, three fourths. So what's the distance? So I've got one, two, three, four, that's an inch. Five, six, that's an inch and a half. You can do it that way. If that confuses you, if it's too hard to see on your um, trimmer, let me show you this. These are just some little cheats I do, right? If you'll take it here, put it in here. This is so easy to read across the top. You're at five and a quarter. I need it to be at six and three four, so I can look real quick. That's one and a half inches. So I know now I just need an inch and a half piece. Now, some of you are thinking, May May, that is overkill. Not if numbers are a problem for you. If you're watching today and you're like, girl, numbers are a problem for me too. Thank you for that tip. There you go. All right, so back this way. So I need a piece that's an inch and a half. Well, I know I can get an inch and a half out of these strips we cut earlier. And why couldn't this be the bottom of this, right? So here's what we'll do. We'll cut it down to four and three fourths. You got to stick with me. There's a method, okay? There's a method. And then I'm going to put this to an inch and a half. And by the way, the edge of this trimmer is an inch and a half. So if I go like that, let's test our, our theory and see if we got what we needed. So we'll grab this piece. This is our four and three quarter inch side. Now we have our inch and a half by four and three fourths. I'll put it right down here. That's just cute, right? And then let's just compare it and make sure we got it right. So if I take this piece and I compare it, look at there, we have exactly another mat. This one's just gonna have a little more interest. So now we go from 14 mats from our as many as to 15 and we'll keep going. Okay, let me show you this one. So this is a piece, I just realized this, so I wanna show you. This is one of the cutoffs that we have that has the sharks on the other side, so the orientation mattered. So what I did is I went through and I cut a piece that's five and a quarter, 
and five and a quarter, and it left me an inch and a half, right? So watch this, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this guy like this, but then I'm just gonna flip him over and use that little bit of shark. Because of the way my little sharks are here, you can't really tell the orientation goes in a different way, and that's gonna work, and I'm gonna get another background just like that. So now with the other piece that is four and three fourths, I just need to find a coordinating piece for the bottom and get another background. All right, I'm just gonna keep on going. So here's the scraps I have left over from those 10 pieces of cardstock. I'm not gonna get rid of these yet. I'm gonna hold on to these until the project's over. You never know when I might need them. All right, so let's look at our breakdown. So these are straight cut mats, by, uh, four and three fourths by six and three fourths. I was able to get 20. These are the ones from the bottom of the page that the orientation could work either way. I got four more of those, so 24. These are the ones we're gonna have to piece together to get more, but I can get 15 out of this. So you guys, is that 39? So 20 and 15 is 35 plus four is 39. Am I right? I don't know. I'll, I'll do a final count at the very end. That's not bad, 39 party invitations. And think about this. You may only need like 12 for you, but maybe you have a sister-in-law or a sister or a, you know someone in your family who needs some invitations for an upcoming party. You could share them. You could both have some. Okay, so let's finish these guys up. Our next step is to do some stamping. So before we stamp, I wanna show you how this is gonna lay out. So this mat is gonna go on my card base, okay, on the front. And I'm not gonna do an open and closing card. I'm just gonna use a one sheet card. I feel like for party invitations, you don't really need you know, a card that opens like a book or what have you. A one sheet flat card will be just fine. So this will be the mat I'm gonna use. And this piece is gonna go on top like this, just for cutesy, okay? And this is where I'm gonna stamp the party invitation. Now this piece is three and a half by five and a half, and I'm gonna need one for every one. I just wanna show you how it's gonna lay out when we get it all put together. See that? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut, I'll probably cut 40 of these, even though I only need like 39. So if I mess up one, I'll have an extra. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of these for all of the backgrounds that I got um, so we can stamp it. So let me show you what the stamping is gonna be. Using our invitation builder set, I chose the little part, I'm gonna turn this over, as you can see I've already stamped one. I chose the part that has the four date, time, place, RSVP, and the sentiment that says, let's party. I think that's gonna be cute. Now that's not where I'm gonna stop, but that's where I'm gonna start with stamping, okay? And I'm gonna do this part on the Misty. I wanna add some color later. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna bring some color into this too to kind of dress it up. But for now, I just wanna get all of my basically um, black and white stamping done. So I'm gonna take this guy and send it over and press that in. I love using my impressible for that. And let me show you, look how cute this is. Isn't this perfect? I love this set. Why I didn't make this years ago, I don't know. But I wanna do this 40 times so I have enough for all of my invitations and we'll move on to step to the next step, which is like what, step 27 in the process? I don't know. We'll move on to the next step in a second. Wow, look at that cluttery mess. <laughs> this looks cluttery, this looks pretty. Let me tell you what we're gonna do next. Remember I told you that I wanted to add some color to this but I wanted to get all the black and white stamping done first. Well, I've done that. Then I went to my colored inks, and you guys know the VersaClairs are my favorite, and I picked colors that went with the paper pack. Now, the interesting thing is if you look at these like this, they don't really look like the colors that I've been using, but I matched it up. I'll show you what I did. I took my sticker sheet, do you see that? And matched it up, and look how much that matches. Pretty cool, right? I don't think they look anything like what I've been using, but they seem to. Now, the next thing I did is I took my stamp set. Look, it's practically cleaned off, I'll show you. I took my stamp set and I pulled off all of the little confettis and the stars and the things like that, and I'm gonna use that to add some color. So, I have put everything on its own block, and the reason is, this is not gonna be a quick process and I don't want this to take forever. I wanna just run through this, right? I'm using my glass board so if I stamp off the page, it's fine, it's gonna go on the glass and I can just literally grab and stamp and that's what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be easy. Now, one thing I will do is like, if I put this into red, it's gonna go back into red. So this is gonna be the one that gets the red ink. So I'll stamp that one there, right? And at this point, I don't even know the layout because I haven't started yet, so let's see. Let's put some blue. Let's bring it down here. I'm gonna do the layout and then I'll decide and then I'll just repeat that um, for the rest of the of the little card pieces. 
This is a good piece because it's nice and long to cover that corner. See, isn't that just going to add so much? I think it is. Now, you'll notice I'm having to use small and large blocks because I don't have enough small blocks. You would think I would, and I do have a lot of blocks. So I'm doing it like this, and then I want to add a word. This says, join us, okay? Now, when I'm doing this, I'm not gonna leave this like this. I have it here for you to see on camera. This will be so messy if I'm not careful. But when I go to do this, I'll get this more comfortable for me. But I just want you to see the process. I'm gonna add the word join us right down here in the bottom in color, okay? So I've got that in a green. And then what else have I got here that I haven't used? I've got this little guy and let's use, let's add some green. Let's put some green at the top right in here. Now, the other thing I want to do is this stamp set comes with these little stars, a, a little diamond shape, and a circle. I want to add those, and you're going to think this is weird, but I'm going to add them in black. I think we have enough color here, okay? So, I'm going to put the little stars in black. I also think they'll really help um, everything to pop. You could do them in yellow, or you could do them in any other color. I just think they'll be cute like this, and see how they really show up. And I'm even going to add one down here, and now watch this. <laughs> If you, like me, have used all of your blocks and you still have that one little one you want to stamp, I put it on the end of my ruler. It's not ideal, but it does get the job done. Do you see this? Because it's such a tiny little piece. I don't really have to be too fussy with it. So I'm just going to touch it down on the page. Just use what you got, right? Y'all know I'm that person. So I'm going to put this down on the page and you'll see it works. So use whatever you got. If you have a smaller ruler, even something like your misty corners, you can put stamps on these and use them so you don't have to, you know, load and unload blocks over and over. But look how cute that is. And then we're just going to do this to every single one of our little pieces and then we can start assembling. So I'm going to cut away, get this where I can get this done, and then we'll get right back together. Check it out, I got them all stamped. I did make one edit. Remember how I told you I was gonna use the star and the little diamond shape? I changed my mind because that was tedious. So <laughs> I went straight to stars and I don't think you can tell the difference and I think it works just as good. So that is what I did. I love those, got all those stamped. I wanna show you something else I did before we move on. I found some coordinating cardstock that I have in my stash. I'll link this cardstock below. I love it. It's the, let me show you because I think it is amazing. It's not exactly this pack that I used, but this um, AC cardstock that comes in these, um, it was this one I used because there's the orange paper, but do you see this? It comes in this like storage container. This is the coolest thing ever. It sits on your shelf. It's so easy to see from the side what cardstock is in it. So I keep it close to hand. And then when I'm doing stuff like this, I can um, grab the cards like I need that coordinates. And here's what I did. The reason I want to spend a second on this. I don't want to cover up a lot of my designer paper that I've cut down because it's pretty and I want a lot of the pattern to show. But I do think this is going to need a little bit of separation between itself and the backer, the way I've designed the card. So I cut this piece only an eighth of an inch bigger on both sides. You know, we normally do a quarter of an inch bigger and we end up with a thicker um, band around whatever we're matting, but I wanted it to be super thin. So that's what I did. And I wanna say I cut this three and five eighths by five and five eighths, but I'll double check and we'll put the measurements in for you. All right, so there is that. Let's move on to the next step. I'm gonna tell you guys, I've gotten ink everywhere from that stamping project. And I will just tell you, I don't plan to keep these cards. I plan to give these as a giveaway at the end of the video. So if you receive these cards from me and you see all my little inky fingerprints, just call those love prints and accept that I got ink everywhere. Okay, so there we go. This is a five by seven card base that is pre-scored. Okay, now you remember I told you for this design, I didn't want to use a pre-scored. I'm just using a flat, not necessarily pre-scored, but I'm just making a flat card that's going to be this size. So what I did, because I never use five by seven, it's so rare, I got out enough of my card bases and cut them in half on the score. Okay, so what I've got here is 40, although I think we're making 39, but I've got 40 pieces cut by just cutting that in half. Now, you can do this with regular cardstock. Just cut yourself a piece that is five by seven. This is how I'm doing my invitation, just flat, okay? I don't love a five by seven because I feel like it wastes cardstock, but in this instance, those 
uh, pre-cut pieces, pre-scored pieces I had have been in my stash forever, and I might as well use them. All right, it's time to assemble. Wow, all this for the fun part. So I'm tempted to start with my full matte pieces, but I'm going to start with these that I'm going to be layering together. And the reason is I'm so afraid I'm going to lose these pieces and, and drop them because I've got them all matted together or stacked together. So we're going to start with that. So I'm going to take one of my card bases, okay, get my glue ready. It's funny, I haven't used this glue since last year. Haha. <laughs> I have to make a last year joke, y'all know. Okay, so I'm going to glue down this top section, and you remember we cut these pieces so that they would uh, make a whole mat for us, right? So I'm gonna lay this in. Now this one, I cut with our regular quarter of an inch border, all right? So this is not one that's gonna have that little thin border, so I just wanna make sure I get pretty close around the top there, and then this guy's just gonna go right down here and finish this off. So I'm gonna run through and I'm gonna glue down all of my, we'll call these the two pieces. <laughs> I'm gonna glue down all my two pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, so here's what I did. After I got all of my backers glued on, I took my little piece here and glued it onto the top, just like this with all of our invitations. I had that one extra. But I wanna show you how cute these are. Look at the little two colored ones. Isn't that awesome? No one will ever know we had to turn our paper in a funny way to make this happen. It looks like it should have been that way. Now let me show you the next thing I wanna do. I want to go to the sticker sheet and I wanna add some stickers. Now I don't think I'm gonna have enough stickers to add to every single one. That's probably okay. I just think it'll be cute. But if you're making these for a specific amount of invitees, is that correct? You might only need 12 or 20 or something. You'd probably have enough. But let me show you how cute this is. Let's say we take this little motorbike because some of these little stickers are, you know how these stickers are. They're so cute. Grab this little motorbike. And right down here in this corner, I'm going to let this be my sticker home. Isn't that cute just to add a little something? It just really dresses it up. And I've done it on a couple already just to see what it looks like, especially the little dinosaurs. Maybe, oh, here's a bike, and this has got the bike background. That might be cute together. So you can think about that too. Do you wanna, you know, match the little background up? Kinda cute. And I'm just gonna run through and put all of these that I can on, you know, add a little sticker where I can, just like this. Now, while I'm doing it, I wanna to talk to you about this expanse on the back. I know you're like, oh, all this space. I think this is a great place to put any explanation about the party. And this is where you'd wanna use your printer. Just use your home printer. Go. I used to do this all the time. I would go into my home printer. I would make out a little form. Maybe it says, you know, we can't wait to see you. Um, no gifts or this kind of gift or we really want books. You know how everybody kind of gives you ideas for what the party would be like. Um, I think this would be a cool place to put that. So, the whole backside is used for any old thing you want it to be used for. All right, I'm gonna run through, put on some stickers, and I'll get right back with you. So there you go, guys. And you see how I just kind of coordinated the sticker to the background? I did not get a sticker on every one, but I did get a sticker on over half of them. And I wanna show you, I had these stickers left. Now, there's a couple things I wanna tell you. Number one, as I told you, I do not need 40 party invitations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these into two stacks of 20, and I'm gonna give these away to two people who can use them. So if you're interested in winning 20 party invitations, the link for the giveaway will be in the description below. It's just a raffle copter giveaway. We'll run that till the end of the month, and then we'll have two lucky winners for that. Also, I wanna tell you, with the pieces you have left over, as you know, I had some scraps, I had these scraps, I had this piece, I don't really know what I was planning with this one, but that piece did end up left. And I also had these two pieces. So I was like, you know what? This is plenty to do a folio with. So what would be really cool is to do the party, right? Especially if this is your child's party or what have you, and make a folio for the child to put photos in about themselves or maybe from the year they're celebrating. Wouldn't that be cute to say it's their sixth birthday and you make a folio and go add photos from your sixth birthday to this? That would just be so cute because you have plenty left to do a folio with. All I would suggest, because you're thinking, well, there's no big pieces of paper, Use one of my three-page folios. We'll link the folio playlist below. Use one of those, and the paper that you use right here to do this background would be the perfect paper to make your folio out of, and you can get a lot from this one paper pack. Now, is your brain rolling? Are you thinking of all the paper packs out there? Shannon did. Shannon was like, I'm totally doing this for my niece. Um, Lucy's birthday's coming up, and she's gonna do hers doing the as many as invitations, and I think it'll be perfect. Also, think about this. If you're like, yeah, mammy, but I don't need 
40 invitations. Make the invitations you need and then make thank you cards with the rest. Do it in as many as style and you have bought one paper pack and gotten so much mileage out of it. You better pick up the stamp set though. Let me bring that in because I, I do think this guy's going to be a workhorse this year. I really love it. We're already planning some kind of coordinating ones to go with it because I think there's a lot more we can add, but I'm loving this set so much, and I just think it just makes a perfect invitation. I hope you guys enjoyed this As Many As, and um, if you would like to see more of my As Many As videos, don't forget to subscribe. We put out about three videos a week. I know a lot of you guys are new from the new year, so welcome over. And those of you who've been here before, you know how much you love an as many as, and so here's one more idea for you. Thanks so much for being here today. Don't forget, if you make something that I inspire like this, if you're like, hey, I wanna try this, take a photo of it and share it on our customer gallery. We love to see what you guys are making. Until next time, guys, bye now.